A new memorial honoring those who lost their lives due to the coronavirus. What this gesture means to people in our community. And the pandemic shined a light on some issues in our community, including food insecurity. How some bright minds are coming together to find solutions. Live from Case at 12, the news at noon starts right now. Deep in our hearts, that message was echoed this morning at a special memorial installed in downtown honoring the lives lost due to COVID. More than 3,400 hearts have been placed along the fencing of the corner of Market and Alamo Street. Tiffany Wirtz is there with the story behind the memorial. Tiffany? David Ursula, residents have been placing different messages here along the fence on these hearts and been placing different pictures to remember those who have passed away due to COVID-19. The memorial is called Deep in Our Hearts, a memorial to lives lost to COVID. A ceremony was held around 10 a.m. City leaders, residents and family members of those who died of COVID attended today's event. Families remember their loved ones. Local resident Joanne Ramirez spoke about her mom. I know that my mom is watching over us in spirit and she's always by our sides. Our actions today and every day must focus on ensuring that we respect those who have been lost by protecting our families today and the generations that follow. City leaders who led nightly briefings throughout the pandemic, which informed the community about COVID, also shared a message. They encouraged residents to get vaccinated. Residents have been stopping by and leaving flowers and messages for loved ones at this memorial site. Now this site will be open to the public and will be up for about a month. Reporting from downtown, Tiffany Huertas, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Tiffany. As the city of San Antonio continues to increase in population, so do the challenges that larger cities face. And one of those problems is food insecurity, which was highlighted during the COVID-19 pandemic. That was the task for students to solve for this year's Smart City Challenge. Executive producer Jason Foster spoke with a team to find out their plan to tackle food insecurity. Volunteers can pick up from those closer locations and deliver to people's houses. It's pitch day for these students at John Jay Science and Engineering Academy. There are a number of volunteer organizations already partnered with the San Antonio Food Bank. The team of four is competing in the 2021 SA Smart Challenge. SA Smart is a cooperative effort between the mayor's office, local STEM education, and other nonprofits. This team is pitching their idea against five other area high school teams on a solution for food insecurity in San Antonio. We wrote down every idea possible, eliminated ideas that were probably not feasible, um, and then afterwards narrowed it down to the ones we thought could be possible. During the pandemic and February winter freeze, San Antonio saw the number of people needing food assistance double. Some figures estimate that total to have been near 120,000 people needing help. Team member Abigail Ibarra remembers seeing the lines of cars at Traders Village and the Alamo Dome. That's food insecurity. Um, and especially with now, most with coronavirus, a lot of people have lost their jobs or like have been struggling to get food on their table. Um, having these resources for food banks are super important. The teams have roughly seven minutes to pitch their ideas virtually to a panel of judges. Eric Azule is one of those judges. He's the president of ACIR, which is a nonprofit that helps startups and entrepreneurs around the world. There's, you know, usually several main components we look at, basically have you define the problem. Um, you know, does your solution ma match that problem? How scalable is your solution? Ibarra and her team started working on their solution in February. Our idea was to create, um, to use unused commercial buildings to have these food bank services there that are closer to people who actually need it. So um, realistically, we would want to figure out where most people who are struggling with those food insecurities are, try to put a location as close to like their um, neighborhood as possible. Not only are the students learning about the challenges cities face, but they are applying their STEM education to a purpose that will have a positive impact on the neighborhoods they live in. For me, I'm thrilled to see that it's getting, they were starting to teach these skills or um, lower and lower, so earlier and earlier in the educational systems, and um, I, I think it's great. Because in the end, this is for people of San Antonio. We want to make sure that everyone has food on their plate. We don't want um, people to let their insecurities get in the fact of get in the way of getting something that they need in the end. Jason Foster, KSAT 12 News. 
The SA Smart Challenge ends on Friday. The first place winners are going to get the Mayor's Cup trophy and the hope that their winning solution could be put into place by the city. And happening right now, Governor Greg Abbott is in Fort Worth. He's about to address border security there. The governor is set to provide an update on the state's ongoing efforts. Abbott is going to be joined by the director of Texas Department of Public Safety and the Tarrant County Sheriff. If you'd like to hear the full remarks, you can go to KZ.com. Of course, we will have more about this story on our later newscasts. And new at noon, we have more information about a man who died while he was trying to get a VIA bus to stop. The medical examiner's office identified him as 53-year-old James Alvarez. In a statement, VIA previously told us that Alvarez was chasing down a bus and tapping on its side, and that's when he fell under the bus's back tires. He died at the scene. Officers are hoping the public has a few clues as they try to crack two separate cases. First, the police trying to track down a woman who they say was seen on the northeast side scamming people out of money. Take a look at the person police are trying to find. According to officers, back on May 9th, she walked up to a home in the 300 block of Blaze Avenue, not too far from Austin Highway. And that's when the suspect asked a neighbor for a donation, which she said would be for a church. The victim handed over $18. And then this woman allegedly asked if the victim had more money so she could bless the money. And police say that's when the victim brought out $3,000 and the suspect is accused of stealing it. Officers think the woman could be involved in similar cases. And officers also want to find this person in connection with a robbery. Police say it took place at the Magic Food Mart in the 5100 block of Fredericksburg Road. Officers think this person uh, robbed someone, then ran off. If you can help police with either of these cases, please call Crime Stoppers at 210-224-STOP. The death toll from that Santa Clara County mass shooting climbed overnight after another victim passed away. Many of the victims were county employees, and so was the shooter. ABC's Aaron Katursky has the latest for us. When Sam Cassidy left home Wednesday morning for the Valley Transportation Authority maintenance yard in San Jose, it appears he intended to do a lot of damage. The suspect um, had on him, or at the place where he died, um, two semi-automatic handguns, but and then 11 magazines that were that were um, had ammunition in them. While authorities have said nothing about motive, a picture is emerging of a gunman who disliked his job and was known to be angry. Hot temper. He had a hot temper. Um, and sometimes he could hide it. At his workplace, Cassidy opened fire in two buildings during shift change, seemingly choosing his targets, all men. I do know that he had a specific agenda and was targeting certain people. He walked by other people. He let other people live as he gunned down other people. Tonight, there's a vigil in memory of the nine deceased victims, including Taptajeep Singh, a light rail train driver with two kids. We heard they, uh, he chose the people to shot, but I don't know why they chose him. He has nothing to do with him. Police said explosive of materials were found in the gunman's locker and at his home. The sheriff said she believes the gunman may have had a device to set fire to his home after he left. Authorities believe he had no intention to return. Aaron Katursky, ABC News, New York. The weather pattern is changing again. It looks a little more active as we get into uh, late tomorrow and then again next week. We'll take a look at the 7 day forecast coming up. Cowboys quarterback Dak Prescott not working out today. We'll explain why coming up in a few minutes in sports. And a special surprise for some local students. How a challenge to mask up led to them being better prepared for their college expenses. A challenge to mask up, leading to thousands of dollars in scholarships for future college students. Palo Alto College holding the first ever Show Me Your Mask competition. This initiative was meant to encourage residents to celebrate the upcoming fiesta in a safe and fun way. But Stephen Cavazos tells us how this was all part of a bigger mission for education, too. That was definitely unexpected, but very appreciated and grateful for 
for that. Katie McCleary was taken by surprise today when she learned her daughter Boston walked away with more than a trophy for this mask. Boston was one of 14 finalists who received a $6,200 scholarship. Hey, every every dollar counts nowadays, so that's way exciting. Awards were handed out at Athens Elementary School. This was all part of Palo Alto College's Show Me Your Mask Challenge, a spin on the popular Fiesta phrase, Show Me Your Shoes. A total of $86,000 in scholarships toward the college were awarded. It was a collaborative initiative with District 4 Councilwoman Dr. Adriana Rocha Garcia, the Fiesta Commission, and Maya Say. The children of Athens Elementary who participated in this event, as well as our adults, are walking away with a scholarship for two years of scholarship out at Palo Alto College. Garza says this is part of their Educate South movement. He calls it a community effort. The goal, to focus on bringing educational awareness during a student's early years. Events like this keeps the message up front. We care about each other. We want education to continue to move forward, particularly here in the Southside community. McCleary couldn't agree more. What parent doesn't want, you know, <laughs> security for their kids and hopeful that they can go to college? Stephen Cavasso's KSAT 12 News. People on the west side will have an easier time accessing a trail. The groundbreaking for the Hebner Creek Trailhead project took place this morning. It's near the intersection of Crystal Hill and Crystal Bow, not far from Loop 410 and Bandera Road. Now, the project aims to help people access a trail that already exists there. The project will also add shade elements, a drinking fountain, lighting, a crosswalk, benches, and trees. The San Antonio community really loves the idea of this Creekway Trail. They've always supported it at the polls, right, when we've had the sales tax initiatives. And it's certainly great for our health, great for our quality of life, and it actually helps you get from point A to point B sometimes. The work is anticipated to be completed before the end of spring 2022. I think the benches and the trees are very important to this trail. Of course. And if you haven't been out and about on a weekend in a long time, this might be your weekend. Yeah, I think so. There will at least be some chances to be outside now. It is going to be humid. Here's the great news. It doesn't look like it's going to be overly hot as we get into Memorial Day. Usually Memorial Day feel like, feels like temperatures get up near 100. Not the case this year. The aquifer is down six tenths of a foot to 666.2 and your pollen count molds down a lot into the moderate category. 610 grass is low. We'll look ahead to your Memorial Day weekend forecast coming up. So a coolish Memorial Day weekend? Well, it's all relative, right? No, Not no. hot. Not hot. So there you go. We're talking 80s. Uh, it will be somewhat humid. We will have a little bit of rain around, but all in all, I think the Memorial Day weekend looks pretty good. Let's first start with a look back. Drought monitor is in, and this is good news. So this was last week. We did pretty well. We were eating away at the drought. Look what happened this week, even more so. Uh, this is good. Uh, most of the drought has completely gone away. Just a moderate drought left from Catula to Eagle Pass, Kerrville to Fredericksburg. Was the areas that still could use a little bit more rain, but there is some of the forecast, and I think we'll continue to eat away at the drought situation. So fantastic as we go into the summer. Here's a look at the time lapse this morning. Lots of clouds, and then the last couple of frames there, you'll see the sun begin to pop out. Some blue sky here and there, and that's pushing temperatures up. 81 degrees at the airport. South southeast Julie winds at 15 dew point. That's an important number at 71. That is still way up there. Cloud cover is starting to diminish. This will continue to break up. Uh, even more so as we get into the afternoon, so enough sun to get us up to near 90 later today. 82 in Seguin, 85 right now in New Braunfels, 85 Castroville, and 83 in Hondo. 86 Carrizo Springs closing in on 90 in our usual hot spot down there in Catula. Two points. Well, they're not going to go down much. They may come down some as we get into Monday and Tuesday, but this is still muggy. So the, the moisture sticks with us into next week. We can pretty much get used to that, right? As we head into the summer, uh, we'll continue to see these uh, warm and humid afternoons. 89 expected high today, 87, 7 o'clock. We'll be down around 80 by 10 o'clock. Southeast Julie winds 10 to 15 miles per hour. Here's the setup. Uh, there is now a new tornado watch box across parts of Oklahoma. That's where severe storms are starting to erupt, and they'll see more of that going into the afternoon. And then severe thunderstorm watches north of that for us. It remains rain free today, but we are watching another piece of energy. We can see that on the water vapor. It shows us those swirls in the atmosphere 
And there is a piece of energy. It's not a big one, but it's enough to help spark off some showers and storms across North Texas on Friday. And then some of those could push down into our area Friday night. So let's look at the forecast here. That's all that severe weather that we were just looking at. This is six o'clock this afternoon, but there'll be more of it. And some storms out across West Texas today, too. Now let's fast forward to four o'clock tomorrow. Doesn't show a whole lot here. I think Friday is generally a quiet day for us, but we'll be watching what's going on to our north and to our west. Late in the day, we'll start to see those storms up north come together as a cluster of storms. At least that's the general trend. And then by Saturday morning, this is midnight, so late Friday night, early Saturday, we could see a cluster of storms coming through. By the time it gets to us, probably weakening a little bit. But uh, these, these clusters, groups of storms, can a lot of times bring some heavy rain and a little bit of severe weather with them. So we'll keep an eye on it. It's all going to depend on where these storms initially develop and some outflow boundaries and how it all sets up. But we're going to put a chance of rain in there Friday night, Saturday morning. And then by Saturday afternoon, the atmosphere will have stabilized a little bit, but we could see a few more isolated showers and storms. So it plays out like this. 10% chance overnight tonight, mainly out west. 40% chance, though, Friday night, and then a 20% chance on Saturday. And there is an outside risk of some stronger storms, marginal risk, San Antonio to the north, and that's with that cluster of storms that uh, presumably will be moving south. 89 degrees today, 90 tomorrow, 40% chance of rain Friday night into Saturday, 86 for a high on Saturday, 84 Sunday, just a 20% chance of rain on Memorial Day, 85, and the rain chances pick up from there, increasing Tuesday into Wednesday, and temperatures aren't so bad. Mid-80s going into next week, guys. Not a bad way to enter June. Thank you. Yep. The Texans have signed quarterback Davis Mills, and so far the Mavs are dominating the Clippers in the playoffs. We've got highlights coming up. Pro football coverage, powered by Davis Law Firm. Work a day, take a day off. That is the planned schedule for Dallas Cowboys star quarterback Dak Prescott when it comes to the organized team activities this week. They're just trying to be cautious. It was just over seven months ago when he suffered that devastating injury on October the 11th that saw him not only dislocate his right ankle but suffered a compound fracture of both bones. Dak telling us he knew a month ago he was ready to go but admits he's made a lot of progress mentally as well. A couple of weeks ago, I mean, y'all saw me uh, handing off the ball and carrying out my fake. Uh, a couple of weeks ago, I may have been a little bit more timid where uh, the last few days I, I was really trying to push it and I was trying to go further than I normally would carrying out the fake. Just uh, as I said, just for that psychological effect to say, hey, you're good, you're fine, you see you're doing it. So uh, as the more reps happen, the better and better it feels. And remember, over the last couple of days, linebacker Jalen Smith made headlines because he decided to switch his jersey number from 54 to 9. Well, he did it because he started wearing nine when he was just nine. He did admit that he did not talk to Tony Romo about taking over his number, but now with a new defensive coordinator in Dan Quinn, and after using their first pick in the NFL draft to select linebacker Michael Parsons, what have the Cowboys told him about his role now that the locker room is filling up? I'm one of the, older, the oldest guys in the room now, um, now the defensive on the defensive roster, and uh, really just getting an opportunity to, to take that next step. Um, you're really leading. Uh, Sean Lee had a, a, a hell of a career, um, and, and, and kudos to him. Big shout out to Sean Lee just on um, all the hard work and determination that he brought to this game and to this franchise. Um, definitely someone that, that, that we all look up to. Um, but for me, it's just taking this role in, in, in leading and getting an opportunity, um, you know, for this, for this for this defense to succeed the right way. In the meantime, the Houston Texans have signed their first draft pick quarterback, Davis Mills. That's according to the Houston Chronicle that says it's a four-year deal for the Stanford quarterback. Because the Texans had traded away their first two picks in this year's draft, Houston selected Mills in the third round. It wound up being the final Texans draft pick to sign yesterday, even though Mills had a very short college career. He was able to throw for over 3,400 yards with 18 touchdowns. The Texans selecting a quarterback with their first pick as insurance if Deshaun Watson, who is facing 22 civil lawsuits, can't suit up for one reason or another. 
Hey, tough for Spurs fans. Do you root for the Mavs or the Clippers? So far, it's been all Mavs over the Clippers. They were in Los Angeles for the first two games in the NBA playoffs. They took a two to nothing lead in their best of seven series. Now headed back to Dallas for the next two games. That's even after former Spur Kawhi Leonard scored 18 of his 30 first half points in the first quarter alone. But still, the Mavs held the lead thanks to Luka Doncic who led Dallas with 39 points, including five three-pointers. The turning point was the third quarter when the Mavs outscored the Clippers 30 to 19, giving Dallas as much as a 14-point lead. Leonard still finished the game with 41 points, but with only 11 total in the second half and a 127 to 121 loss. So what's the message to Clippers going into game three Friday in Dallas? Making sure that our that we stand even kill, you know what I mean. Um, it's playoff basketball. Um, we just got to figure it out. We got to figure it out. Um, just like the regular season, you might lose two in a row, and then you go on the winning streak. So, uh, just having that same mentality, um, and just you know, we playing the same team, so um, you know we know what they're doing, and uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. That's the message. Um, just got to stay focused and make sure that um, we keep an eye on the prize. All right, those Memorial Day sales, they're heating up as retailers offer huge savings on big ticket items. We have details on that in the next half hour. And the push to vaccinate the nation is still in high gear. Meanwhile, there is good news about immunity from the virus. Negotiations continue in Washington as Democrats push President Biden's infrastructure proposal. Republican lawmakers have been leery of the size and the scope of this proposal. ABC's Mary Alice Parks tells us Republicans are presenting their latest counteroffer. As Americans prepare to hit the roads and airports this holiday weekend, a bipartisan deal to revamp and reinvest in the nation's infrastructure is picking up speed. The negotiations, while bumpy, are ongoing, both sides sounding increasingly upbeat. Infrastructure is a bipartisan uh, issue. This is something that Democrats, independents, and Republicans truly care about. Republicans know Democrats could pass a massive spending bill on their own, but they would like a seat at the table and are fighting for a small smaller package. Today, GOP lead negotiators proposing around $1 trillion in spending, including $506 billion for roads and bridges, including some money for electric vehicle infrastructure, as well as another $98 billion for public transit systems. This new Republican offer compared to the president's latest $1.7 trillion offer that included much more funding to fight climate change, as well as build housing and expare care for seniors, too. We have have stayed within the boundaries of our original um, plan. Uh, I think that's what the American people think of when they think of, in, uh, of infrastructure, and that's certainly what we do too. Beyond the price tag and spending priorities, the two parties still far apart on how to pay for it all. Republicans suggesting dipping into COVID relief funds that have not yet been spent, as well as user fees like tolls. This proposal is fully paid for, does not need to have any raises in taxes, and avoids the big threat to the economy right now, which is inflation. Democrats so far uninterested and pushing instead to increase the corporate tax rate lowered under President Trump. Throughout these negotiations, the White House has felt it has the public on its side. Polling shows a majority of Americans support the president's proposals. Mary Alice Parks, ABC News, Washington. Senate Republicans are expected to block a bill today that would create a commission to investigate the Capitol riot earlier this year. The House passed legislation to create a bipartisan panel of 10 people to figure out what happened when protesters stormed the Capitol January 6th. 35 Republicans joined Democrats in passing that bill, 252 to 175. But in the Senate, Republicans say Democrats just want a commission so they can use it as a political tool in the 2022 midterm elections. The Biden administration enhancing pipeline security after the Colonial Pipeline hack. Pipeline companies will now be required to report confirmed or potential cyber attacks to the Department of Homeland Security within 12 hours. DHS officials say the new mandate also requires companies to designate a 24-7 cybersecurity coordinator to liaison with the government. 100 of the most critical pipelines are impacted by the new requirement, including the Colonial Pipeline, which was paralyzed by that cyber attack a couple of weeks ago, causing gas shortages in the southeast. 
The push to vaccinate continues across the country. That's right. This comes as new research examines how long protection against COVID could last. Two encouraging new studies suggesting people who recovered from the virus had some immunity long after antibodies faded, even a year later. And researchers found cells in the bone marrow still remember the COVID infection. Some health experts suggest that if you've had the virus, getting the vaccine can almost act like a booster shot, supercharging antibodies with protection lasting much longer. Nearly 60% of Americans have gotten at least one dose by now. Outside with live cam, it's warming up. It's getting more and more humid. So you're going to start warning people about, you know, light clothes and lots of water. This humidity is like, man, lean up against this stuff. It's thick. <laughs> What's going on? Uh, you're not wrong. You're not wrong. And we are getting to that point where we do have to worry about the heat index really jumping up there during the afternoon. It'll feel like it's in the mid 90s today. So heads up there. Let's look at the numbers right now. We've got partly cloudy skies, 81 degrees at the airport, 82 Randolph, 82 Tarpley, quite a bit more sunny as you get off to the west. So 80 in Lost Maples with lots of sun there, more partly cloudy for New Braunfels where it is 85. Uh, forecast heat index today will jump up to around 93 here in San Antonio. Your feels like number increase. So springs 99. It'll feel like 103 in Catua. So this is close to summer like heat. Uh, good news is that temperatures do come down a little bit. I think this weekend, if you're hitting the roads tomorrow afternoon, here's what you can expect on Friday afternoon. Scattered showers and storms up around Dallas. Houston will see some afternoon thunderstorms. If you're heading down towards the coast, it looks pretty good until at least early Saturday morning. Partly cloudy skies in South Padre, Port A, partly cloudy El Paso, looking at sunny skies in 97 if you're headed west. Uh, the Memorial Day weekend, 40% chance of storms Friday night into Saturday morning, 86, 20% chance uh, Saturday afternoon. Sunday, mostly cloudy, 84. And by Monday, just a few isolated storms in the afternoon. So all in all, pretty good, 85 on Memorial Day. Guys. Thank you, Justin. Shoppers may be ready to save during Memorial Day sales. However, shortages and shipping delays could complicate things. We will explain. And it was a rare interstellar double feature. But what makes it so special? The answer later on in the show. Never miss a story. Watch live or when you want. San Antonio's latest news and weather. Streaming free on KSAT TV. This is your Daily Tech and Business Briefing from Cheddar News. Grab your mouse ears as Disneyland reopening to non-California residents on June the 15th. Now, guests will need to wear face masks, but they don't need to be vaccinated. Disney, however, encourages visitors to be fully vaccinated or get a negative COVID test before they enter. California also expected to lift all COVID restrictions on June the 15th. Meanwhile, Bitcoin slowly back on the rise this morning. Currently, it's hovering around the $39,000 range. Ethereum, the world's second largest crypto, still holding steady. That's in the 27 $700 range. Both are still recovering from last week's sell off as Bitcoin still a far cry from its all time high of $63,000. Cryptos across the board took a hit yesterday that after Iran banned crypto mining for four months. And make sure your Amazon wish list is ready because Prime Day coming on June the 21st and the 22nd. That according to Bloomberg. Prime Day typically the precedent to all the big summer sales as competing retailers try to keep up with Amazon. It's also one way that Amazon attempts to gain and retain subscribers to Prime. This is they entitle them to the best and earliest discounts. And that's your Cheddar News Business and Tech Update. I'm Baker Machado coming to you from Cheddar Studios in Lower Manhattan. CVS now offering vaccine incentives. The pharmacy has launched a sweepstakes to get more shots in people's arms. Customers who receive a COVID-19 vaccine from CVS Health can win prizes through weekly drawings over a six week period, including free cruises, a trip to the Super Bowl, cash rewards. CVS says it has already administered more than 17 million doses. 
We've got some good news for travelers. Cruise ships are coming back to the U.S. next month. Celebrity Cruise Lines has been cleared to sail from Fort Lauderdale in June. The Centers for Disease Control and Prevention requires all cruise lines to complete trial cruises that replicate real world conditions or requires 95 percent of the passengers and crew are vaccinated against COVID-19. Celebrity has opted to require vaccination proof for all crew and passengers over 16 years of age. Memorial Day is coming up, so you know most stores are advertising sales, especially when it comes to clothing like J. Crew discounting shorts and bathing suits with an additional 40% off all sale items. And then Old Navy and Eddie Bauer with 50% off of everything. With Memorial Day sales, retailers are really good to be emphasizing their items for warmer weather. So that's everything from outdoor home items for the patio, that's warm weather clothing. You can also see grills on sale, although it may be a good idea to hold off on buying one until after the 4th of July. They're usually cheaper at that time, but no matter what you buy, there could be shipping delays due to product shortages and backlogs. For example, FedEx says it continues to see a peak like surge in package volume since so many people are shopping online these days. Looking outside with live camera, you got lots of uh, storybook skies. It does look nice, doesn't it? As we look over towards the airport, that place is going to be busy the next couple of days. Hopefully, uh, the rain won't keep travelers from coming in and out, but 81 degrees so far today. 73 was the low this morning. The averages are 89 and 70. The records are 152 set back in 2011 and 1901. We'll talk about some rain chances tomorrow night and again next week coming up. The largest moon of the year coincided with 2021's first lunar eclipse, and it was a stunner. But what makes this supermoon eclipse so special and so rare? Jeremy Roth explains it for us. Stargazers the world over were treated to a rare interstellar double feature as the Mayflower supermoon coincided with 2021's first lunar eclipse, resulting in a large and vivid super blood moon. The best views of the phenomenon were in the Pacific Rim and the western part of the Americas, but the eclipse was at least partially visible nearly anywhere in the world. So what makes a supermoon eclipse so special? A supermoon occurs when a full moon is at its closest orbital distance to the Earth. A lunar eclipse happens when the moon's orbit brings it into the Earth's shadow. But it's the rare combination of these phenomena that results in a vivid, ruby-red lunar light show starring the biggest moon of the year. This particular eclipse also held historical significance. It occurred nearly 60 years to the day from the moment President Kennedy championed America to explore the moon. This nation should commit itself to achieving the goal before this decade is out of landing a man on the moon and returning him safely to the Earth. For NASA scientists, the anniversary brings the moon missions full circle. That's a wonderful way to, to mark not only the anniversary of the history, but also use it to look forward to the next era of lunar exploration that, that we're, uh, we're really on the doorstep of. I'm Jeremy Roth reporting. One day you're going to be vacationing right there on the moon. Gosh, the pictures that have been on the Internet about that moon have been just spectacular Pretty cool they've been awesome it was it was really beautiful we got some pictures uh sent in by viewers and, and they really were great beautiful yeah. shots yeah uh and now we look forward to the memorial day weekend right uh, where weather I think it's going to shape up to be pretty nice. We're going to watch for a couple areas of thunderstorms as we get into Friday night. And then again, I think we have some decent chances next week. Right now, 81 degrees at the airport. South southeasterly winds at 15 miles per hour. A little gusty and winds will be gusty from time to time today, drawing in quite a bit of moisture. 82 degrees, Boulevardy, 79 Canyon Lake, 85 in New Braunfels, 83 Hondo, 86 in Divine, 86 down there in Pleasanton and 88 increase of springs 89 Katua uh, dew points low 70s uh, and that's really been the case the last couple of days there, there are a few 60s there but that's still muggy and uh, dew points will stay elevated for the next several days really the foreseeable future but this is what it feels like right now 85 here in town when you factor in that humidity feels like 90 in Gonzales feels like 92 in Kennedy feels like 94 in Katua so it's already starting to heat up we'll uh, jump up into the upper 80s for highs, probably close to 90 with as much sun as we're seeing now. Southeasterly winds will stay breezy, 10 to 15 miles per hour, and it'll be slow to cool off tonight. 
only falling into the middle of 70s. Satellite picture shows uh, cloud cover uh, really mostly east of I-35. That's where we find partly cloudy skies and then you go west and it's almost full sun. Uh, Del Rio still has a few leftover clouds, but those are quickly going away. And as we look at the bigger picture here, the, the real active weather is going to be up across parts of Oklahoma. Yesterday there were tornadoes across parts of Kansas. Now we'll probably get a uh, few tornadoes, unfortunately, there in the state of Oklahoma with some severe weather already underway there northwest of Oklahoma City. They're also seeing a few showers out in parts of New Mexico and far, far west Texas. Here's what the forecast looks like. Big storms today. This is around 6 o'clock. Some of those will sink closer to the Red River, and then we may get a few storms out west, none of which affect us. I think we're just looking at partly cloudy skies today. Most of tomorrow will be quiet too, but we'll fast forward to 4 o'clock. And uh, it will just be partly cloudy here, but we'll be watching what goes on across central and north Texas. And this will have a huge bearing on what happens Friday night into Saturday morning for us. If some of those storms up across north Texas come together into a cluster of storms, which it looks like they may, this is around 8 o'clock, they would start to affect the hill country by the evening hours and then maybe pushing into around San Antonio by midnight. But we're not going to get too locked in on a time frame here because models are notoriously bad at figuring this stuff out when it comes to these uh, clusters of storms. But most of the models have this general idea of some rain coming down here sometime during the overnight hours, Friday into early Saturday morning. Could bring some heavy rain, hopefully weakening by the time it gets here, but there could be some lightning and thunder mixed in there too. And then this would push towards the coast by early Saturday morning. And then by Saturday afternoon, probably just a few leftover showers and storms. As we mentioned, the best chance of rain will be Overnight Friday, 40% chance, and then a 20% chance during the day on Saturday. There is a marginal risk of severe weather, but notice it cuts off right there south of San Antonio. I think as these storms work south, they will weaken some. And that, that uh, severe weather outlook is for tomorrow, by the way, not today. And as we look at the travel forecast, we mentioned this a little bit earlier, but if you're traveling tomorrow afternoon, you will run into some storms, especially up around Dallas, but Houston may see a few just partly cloudy skies for the Texas coast, South Padre Port A, and sunny skies out west. For us, 90 degrees tomorrow, 86 on Saturday, 84 Sunday. And the rain chances kick back in Monday, although it's just a 20% chance. Better chances Tuesday into Wednesday, guys. Thank you, Justin. Some local dogs pulling double duty. They're training to be service dogs and helping veterans along the way. We're going to take a look at the organization making it happen after the break.